The real name of Rudolf Abel is William Janrikovich Fischer. The legendary intelligence officer was born in England in the family of the Russified German Bolshevik Heinrich Fischer and the Russian Revo. Lucianary Lyubov Korneva. The second son was named after the king of tragedy William Shakespeare. William's older brother Harry later died trying to save a girl drowning in a river. In his youth, Willie was fond of music, loved to draw. At the same time, he learned some secrets of conspiracy from his father. The children grew up in a working environment, were quick-witted and had a strong spirit. By the age of 15, Fisher Jr. managed to work at a shipyard and go to a university in London, but did not have time to get an education there because his parents decided to emigrate to the USSR due to political convictions. There, the family was given rooms in a communal apartment, and William got a job, first as a translator, and then as a draftsman for the civil service. In 1922, Fisher entered the Kutamas, an art and technical educational institution, but the avant-garde direction that was taught there did not suit William, and he left the walls of the workshop. Two years later, he began to study Oriental studies at the Moscow Institute, preferring India. When Fisher completed one course, he was drafted into the army, where he ended up in a radio telegraph regiment. After serving in an elite company for four years, he showed himself as an excellent radio operator and was demobilized with the rank of officer soon. A well-established Komsomol member was hired by the Foreign Department of the Foreign Intelligence Directorate. Thus, intelligence appeared in the biography of an English loyalist and a Soviet citizen. In 1930, William Fisher received permission from the British Embassy to return to his homeland. But he did not immediately go to England. For four years he was engaged in intelligence work in Norway, where he went with his wife and daughter. The next business trip was already in the UK as a radio operator under the leadership of Alexander O. Bulov, better known as Schutt. After the betrayal and escape of the latter, William was forced to return to Soviet Russia, where upon arrival he was promoted to lieutenant. At this time, William met and became friends with another intelligence officer, Rudolf Abel, whose name he later called himself during interrogations of the Americans. As a result of purges in the ranks of the NKVD in 1938, the radio operator was fired, despite his passionate desire to continue intelligence activities. The opportunity to serve his country again presented itself after the start of the war. The NKVD needed radio operators to communicate partisan detachments behind enemy lines, it was Fisher who was entrusted with the training of personnel. After the war, economically weakened and destroyed Soviet Russia was in dire need of information about the state of affairs in the West, US plans, their nuclear potential submarines. We needed a person capable of creating an extensive intelligence network. They decided to send William Fisher to the States, and the latter, under the guise of the artist Emil Goldfuss, settled in New York, all the more he drew well. The intelligence officer's family remained in Moscow. No one suspected a polite photographer and artist, with a cigar and a glass of champagne, sitting in prestigious Soho restaurants among the bohemians of the New World, a Soviet intelligence agent. The disguise was more than successful, and under the pseudonym Mark Fisher organized an extensive network of agents in North and South America for successful work. William received the Order of the Red Banner. There was a lot of work in America, so Rhino Hyhanen undercover named Vic was sent to help the intelligence officer, but the Soviet leadership did not like Rhino's psychological state, and it was decided to recall Vic to Moscow. Out of fright, Hyhanen surrendered to the American authorities, and at the same time surrendered Mark. Moscow knew about the leak, but did not have time to evacuate the agent. On June 20, 1957, the police broke into the Latham Hotel room and arrested William Fisher. 
We knew who he was when they took him, Commissioner Josephs, Swing told reporters. It is curious that under the very noses of the police, Mark, with an expression of Olympian calm on his face, destroyed the most important piece of evidence, allegedly offended by the behavior of law enforcement officers. Fisher asked for a pencil to write a complaint. In front of them, he sharpened it right on the encryption, crumpled the sheet, and flushed it down the toilet. However, they still found a spy kit in the apartment, microfilms, and transmitters. In the same year, a high-profile trial of Rudolf Ivanovich Abel began in New York. This is how the Soviet illegal intelligence officer called himself to the American authorities. However. This is the only thing he told the FBI, who bought into the deception, not even suspecting that the real Rudolf Abel had already died two years ago. During interrogations, Abel remained silent, denied allegations of espionage, did not make a deal with the FBI, and the Soviets denied any connection with the arrested person. Not knowing what to do with him. The Americans sentenced Rudolf to 32 years in prison. The United States never found out that Abel leaked to the Soviets information about the economy, military resources, but most importantly, materials about the creation of atomic bombs. Williams' daughter Evelina Fisher said that in prison the scout entertained himself with mathematical problems, learned languages and silkscreen printing, and painted pictures. Rudolf Abel would have spent the rest of his life in prison, but the situation changed dramatically when an American plane flown by Francis Powers was shot down near Sverdlovsk. Soviet intelligence immediately detained him and sentenced him to ten years in prison. My hopes for a speedy release from prison hopes that did not leave me all the time have now found real ground under them, Abel wrote in his memoirs. The U.S. wanted their man back and offered to exchange intelligence officers. The operation was carried out on the Klinik Bridge. In addition to the pilot, the USSR had to hand over an American student suspected of espionage. Two for one, the exchange was carried out by KGB officer Yuri Drozdov and two lawyers, Wolfgang Vogel and American James Donovan. Together we went to the Soviet end of the bridge, got into cars, and after a while drove up to a small house where my wife and daughter were waiting for me. The 14-year business trip is over. After the exchange, William Fisher continued his work in intelligence, but not as an operative, but as a mentor. The wife of the scout was the harpist Eleanor Lebedeva, whom William married in 1927. In marriage. The couple had a daughter, Evelina. During the three-year business trip in England, Eleanor Fisher taught ballet. Later, the Fishers adopted Eleanor's niece, Lydia, a girl. Lydia's father, Boris Lebedev, drank himself, and her mother died of tuberculosis. After returning from the USA, William spent a lot of time at his dacha in Maitishi. He photographed, read a lot, and even went out to crow. Which he named Carlusha. The bird became very attached to William. William Fisher died on November 15, 1971, from lung cancer. The intellectual, erudite, and surpassed master of conspiracy was 69 years old. The scout was buried at the New Donskoy Cemetery, first as Rudolf Abel, so as not to reveal his true identity for the time being. But later, the real name of the scout was engraved on the grave. Several documentaries have been made about William Fisher, unknown able by Yuri Linkovich, and the Russian documentary film *The U.S. Government Against Rudolf Abel* in 2009. The book *The Secret Archive of the Soviet Illegal Spy* was also published, which contains materials declassified to date on William Fisher, letters to his wife and daughter. Surviving archival photos. Contemporaries still continue to sort through the career and personal life of the famous intelligence officer.